Hello everyone and welcome back to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2 and in this episode I decided to go with some user comments and uh, come up with a more ambitious design than I was originally intending for this episode. If you recall from the last episode I was mulling the fact that maybe I'd need to do a lot more science around Kerbin. Well, we are not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to pursue more of that uh, contract with exploring the moon and really try and achieve orbit around the moon and well, well we'll hold off on landing on the moon and transmitting scientific data from the moon now that contract does not cover the cost of this particular launcher but but if we can reuse this launcher if we can bring it back properly and recover enough of the cost then it will so the base cost for this launch is 45,000 and now uh, one of the comments was, why didn't I just use LVT-30s and T-45s at the bottom stage instead of using the LV-909s? And that's because A, I worked backwards from the rocket equation to get a vehicle that could just get into orbit. And that's what the, the original uh, orbital vehicle series was. And there was also the issue of the landing struts being able to extend past the LV-909s. The LV-909s fit a little bit better under the landing struts. And also, when you use the LV uh, T-45s or T-30s, they have so much thrust that you have to put a lot of fuel on. And that leads to cost, which is why I worked backwards from the rocket equation, because if you just uh, work forward from the engines, you're going to end up with a lot more fuel. However, our, our goal this time is not just to get into orbit. And I've also decided not to put as much fuel as the LV series engines can bear. So we're actually going to have a high thrust to weight ratio during this. Uh, lots of acceleration, which on the one hand isn't efficient, but on the other at least costs less than it would be to fill it up with a maximum amount of fuel. And another issue was the fact that uh, the resulting design, if you put LV T whatever's uh, 30s or 45s at the bottom uh, would not be good because I don't have fuel lines. I don't have fuel lines yet, so feeding the fuel to the other boosters is not possible. Uh, if we could feed the fuel from either out to in or into out, then it would be a more elegant design. But I've decided to make it an elegant design by just dumping fuel. In other words, technically these outer pods should actually extend all the way up to here. But I've decided to remove that just so that it looks a little bit better. Uh, the result is that we'll get more acceleration. Now another thing that we don't have is the flat um, what you got, uh, unmanned controller. All we have is the Stay Put Nick Mark 1 and that does not have a top attachment point. So I've decided to go with this so that our, our launcher is going to be manned and uh, Bill will bring that back down for us. And then Jeb will be in the top and he will have the vehicle that's going to head for the moon. That's the goal of this one. It's going to head for the moon. It's going to be an orbiter. It's not going to try and land on the moon just yet, but we are going to bring it into orbit around the moon. So. And then, of course, this will, after getting that into orbit, will then proceed back down and land as close to the KSC as possible. So that is the plan. I've worked out the math on this. So I know that this barely has enough fuel to make orbit and then uh, re-enter. It doesn't have as much fuel as the other one did to do a retro burn. So it's just going to have to land wherever it lands. Uh, there's no uh, picking a landing spot or anything like that, though the other one didn't do a particular job with that. Anyway, uh, just to note, obviously we didn't have the other unmanned things, we don't have uh, fuel lines yet, we don't have enough uh, science to buy any of that, so or unlock if you will, so that's not an option. Uh, we had, There are a lot of parts that uh, could have made this better uh, struts, for instance, I would have liked to run struts over here just to make it look better, but I don't have struts yet. So that's all a thing. But otherwise, I think this should work. I should note that the gimbling engine is in the center, and then these are the non-gimbling engines. And that's, of course, to save mass. These have a lower mass. 
and I think we'll have enough control with the one gim gimbling engine in the center. Also, because this one has more fuel, uh, it will continue burning. If we put the gimbling engines on the outside, uh, they would run out of fuel, and after that we wouldn't have that kind of control. So that's why the gimbling engine had to go in the center, and of course the pods have their own reaction control, so that's good too. Uh, this is wrong though. I have to remember to fix that. Let's see. Yes, that goes down there. Uh, not good idea to extend the landing legs at the start because they tend to wobble a little bit and so the rocket can go awry. Uh, however, they are necessary to cushion the landing so that we make sure that our engines don't fall off. Okay, so I think that covers everything about this design and uh, we should get the crew ready. I haven't gotten any new crew members. I don't know if it costs more to hire them. I'm not going to test it out right now. Let's just head out and see if we can get to the moon. Okay, here we are. Make sure to throttle up all the way. I don't know why they have the basic throttle setting to halfway. Doesn't do any good. If I fire the engines halfway, it's not gonna, not gonna do anything good for me. That's for sure. Okay, uh, Jim and Bill look all right. Uh, we are pointing upward properly. And yes, I think everything is a go for launch. Uh, so, uh, space bar. Now, because of the high acceleration of this, I am going to have to do the gravity turn a little bit earlier than I would normally like, and that's just to smooth things out a bit. Oh, so there is a quirk about how we get into orbit, and I'll discuss that once we uh, get to that point. And that point is right when the outer engines run out of fuel. Got to start a little lean in here. We really need to get horizontal velocity as quickly as possible with the while the outer engines are burning. Also, stay very, very close to the center of the prograde marker in order to ensure that we get maximum efficiency with this. So I'm just following the prograde marker down to uh, to a maximum extent. Actually, we might need to flatten out even faster than this. Let me lean down. Okay, that should be good. Let's see. Uh, not ideal. Not ideal. Really needed to go down faster than that. Okay, I'm gonna shut down the engines there. Let us flatten out and then I'm gonna give the outer engines their final burst. And then things get interesting. Ooh, we got a little bit of a shake there. Okay, let's see where we are. Alright, uh, let's continue the burn, I think, yes. This is this is very tight margin stuff here, we, what we've got. Let me see just this stage, how much fuel we have. Well, that's, that's the best thing. Alright, obviously there was an opportunity to perhaps just land it on this continent here. 
or this peninsula if you will. And I thought about that but I do want to try and get it back to the KSC and I'm talking about the launch portion. Okay that I think gives us enough time. Now here's a trick. Uh, we're gonna get the, uh, both of them into orbit separately because that'll save the fuel in this one and this actually has an overabundance of uh, Delta V. So separation and activation and we'll have this one go first and so Jeb is making orbit now obviously if the orbital vehicle uh, doesn't make orbit that's actually not as much of a problem because the mis mission can still be fulfilled if Jeb makes orbit and we're gonna recover that orbital vehicle anyway the la launcher section okay I think I'm gonna wait till apoapsis to circularize there's no point overdoing it now okay we can't switch to him like that so we're gonna have to go here so here we are here still heading up to apoapsis got that unfortunate little bit there I don't know if we can get rid of it oh, we, we didn't have the stack separator otherwise I would have used that okay we're we're at apoapsis so we actually need to start burning right away And now unencumbered and hopefully not aiming directly at our other vehicle. Let's keep an eye on that. That's far away. This can make orbit fairly easily. There we go. So that's orbit for this one. And we can just uh, leave it hanging out here. Uh, let's turn off SAS so that it doesn't uh, leak electric charge and it should have enough fuel to deorbit so let's go back to the main mission and we need to make sure that it uh, gets into orbit properly because we left it a little bit short I keep forgetting to dump the mono propellant really need to do that this is not efficient to carry that mono propellant with us when we have no way of using it So obviously around the moon what we're going to do is we're just going to collect the, the EVA data and uh, we're not carrying any other instruments with us this time. We'll do that on a subsequent mission. If this uh, EVA data collection works and of course the crew report around the moon then we will probably proceed to do Minmus next. That's probably the best thing to do. So anyway we've got our maneuver to get into orbit properly I think that's all alright I don't need to be perfect with any sort of circularization and the important thing is to transfer to the moon now and actually when I say now we're probably pretty close to where we need to be let's do get the if it'll let me the free return tra trajectory but I don't know if we're in quite the right position for that uh, no be over here there we go I don't think I need it tighter than that uh, a little bit high on the curve and periapsis but we can adjust uh, the return burn there uh, let's go for this uh, moon periapsis that looks good so yep a mm, little bit of an inclination on that uh, return but that's not in the plan to actually use that here we go 
and probably we can do this burn in let's say a minute and a half I'm not sure though oh not bad not bad at all So I have to keep in mind that I can actually throttle these engines in, in default, uh, in stock KSP. Okay, I, I'm tempted to leave the moon periapsis like this. Um, yeah, I think that's probably better. I mean, obviously the free return is not uh, quite where it needs to be, but. I don't intend to use it so uh, yep moon periapsis is good and Jeb is on his way it's gonna take him a few hours uh, five hours and 33 minutes so I think it's okay to switch to our other ship and now we should take a look at what it will require to bring him back down I still haven't uh, hit the KSC properly yet and this has lower fuel margins I think I probably oh yeah one of the problems I had last time was that I was uh, not accounting for the rotation of the planet so let me actually get to the point that I want to do these things and then do them Okay, I need to see where the orbit is ending up. Oh, I don't have much choice. Uh, that's as much fuel as we've got. I think we're going to overshoot. But at least we're not going to be on the opposite side of the planet from the KSC, which might have happened. And uh, actually, we'll probably land closer than this peninsula which was the alternative on the downside uh, it's a water landing and that's always difficult okay so there's nothing for it except for re-entry our other mission is well on its way but uh, nowhere close to where we have to deal with it yet so here we go A lot of this is only possible thanks to the new joint reinforcement that uh, comes with stock KSP. This would not have worked out very well in uh, previous versions of KSP before 0.23. So, got to keep that in mind too. And of course, uh, in stock KSP, we, we like the flame effects. Those are good things. They mean we're slowing down. I think we're good for parachute deployment. There's that. And landing gear. Again, I want to put out the landing gear to make sure we cushion the blow on the engines I don't know I think we've successfully done that on a previous occasion where we landed on the water but uh, not necessarily a hundred percent guaranteed to work obviously I put them on the radial decouplers here because that was the only option I didn't have any other structural part that would be more suitable And we'd like all of this uh, intact, please. We want it all nice and ready to go for the next mission. And of course, uh, in reality, uh, ditching in the water would not give us very good results on that. But as uh, well, we see with Falcon 9, of course. But uh, but it's a start.
Okay, parachutes are open. Uh, velocity is below 8, which is pretty good. Not great. Not as good as with our previous missions, but these engines are heavier. Okay, there we go. And before it flops, recover vessel. So, how far off were we? Uh, got 85%, so uh, 278 kilometers away from KSC. 27,000 already recovered from our, uh, f let's say, 47,000 in uh, costs. So we've got uh, 20,000 left to recover. The contract, le actually, let's see. Well, yeah, let's see how, well, we, we got an advance on the contract. So really, uh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll have to say that we started off with 250 and we want to recover about 17,000 more if possible. So that's our goal to break even on the cost but this is mainly a science mission because we don't have much science and we need to get that from the moon so uh, not too worried about the cost we did rack up some funds and uh, yep yeah, and this is a good thing we brought all our engines back safe yes LVT 45 and uh, LVT 30 four of them so that's all good alright let's turn back to Jeb and then we'll see how we do there. Here we are with Jeb taking aim at the moon. Literally. So uh, let's see how he does. We still haven't really milked the EVA reports around Kerbin yet. We haven't done much of that at all. But let's face it, this is more exciting. I'm not going to uh, really just uh, farm science points like that. Not when I can do better better missions, so... Let's focus on going as far as we can, can and uh, getting the more difficult to reach science. Not that the Moon and Minmus are very difficult, but you know, given the parts that we have and the constraint that I'm working under. And so here we are, Lunar, Mooner, Sphere of Influence. So, that'll be our orbit. No big problems. Plenty of fuel to work with. Let's uh, turn around properly. I've already calculated it out, by the way, and this does not have enough to uh, make the landing on the moon as well as uh, return. So. That's not an option for this right now. Though it's close, it's not too far off. It could land on the moon. It just wouldn't be able to get back home after that. And in any case, we would want to carry more science if you were to land on the moon. Okay, that should be orbit for us. Uh, 47 by 55. And, yep, I think uh, we didn't do the high over the moon EVA report, but we can do that. Uh, in space near the moon. Okay, keep that data. EVA. Please tell me it's not Midlands. Oh, east far side crater. Excellent. Anything but Midlands is good. Okay. So uh, that's East Far Side Crater. It's in the dark, so I can't really see when we cross into a new biome. Let's check here. Highlands, excellent. Kerbin Rise. And where are you? There you are. Midlands. Well, we knew we were going to hit it quickly at some point. Let's just try over here. Midland Craters. Excellent. And where else? 
Uh, unfortunately, we're not hitting these guys. There are no real obvious craters in our in our midst here. Oh, that one. We can get that one. Let's uh, try around here just to see what it is. Still Midlands. Give this area a go. Nope. Okay, that crater. Okay, I think we're in it. Far side crater, okay. I doubt this is anything new, but uh, as we come to the bottom end of it, let's see. Still Midlands. Alright, I think we've done what we came to do. Uh, we'll get the high over the moon on the way out. An inclined orbit isn't very good for returning to the KSC. I'd like to get it as flat as possible. Uh, might be a little bit too much inclination, but... But we'll try it. Okay, very good. Now the high over the moon EVA report. Let's not forget that. Oh, uh, let's check our contract by the way. Make sure we got that one. Yes, the cheap orbit around the moon. Done. Good. Now landing on the moon we could probably do with a probe and that'll be lighter than the command pod so we can carry some science with us. So we'll land on the moon with a probe first before sending a, a Kerbal. And what, what was the last one? Transmit or recover scientific data from the moon. Yeah, so we can uh, transmit the data if it's probe. Or if it's so light that we can actually recover it that'll be another option. Imagine we're high over the moon now. Yes. Okay. Keep that data and board. Now the trick is landing as close to the KSC as possible. And what we might need to do is make orbit around Kerbin first. So it's good that we have plenty of fuel left over. And I mean a tighter orbit of course. Or not, let's see where we're headed here. Ah, darn, it's in the dark. Yeah, we'll have to make orbit and wait till uh, the KSC is in the light. I can't really... Or at least drop our orbit so we're not spending uh, eight hours. Um, and an orbit that's more like two hours might be a little bit more helpful. Okay, this is close to our periapsis. Let's burn retrograde. I don't know how much Delta V we have left over, but let's say I want to drop our orbit. Oh, yeah, that'll do. That's a roughly two hour orbit.
Now, one thing we definitely don't want to do here is leave Jeb without the ability to re-enter. That would not be a good thing. So, very critical that we keep the fuel available for re-entry. But now, let's just wait until the KSC is looking nice and bright. Looks like we'll have to go around one more time. Okay, here I think uh, I think the KSC will be emerging into daylight on the next orbit. So the question is where we want to take care of this. Ooh, we could do a pretty fast re-entry. I mean, we don't have deadly re-entry. Uh, it won't be very good for experimental purposes in terms of figuring out where I should do the re-entry, but it it will be very entertaining. Okay, let's do that. And that means instead of dropping apoapsis, we'll be dropping periapsis into the into the surface actually, I think will be probably the best. Is this the right time though? Looks like uh, the KSC is about a third of the planet around. We'll probably end up closer to this peninsula than anything else. Maybe we can shorten that up. Let's see. Okay. We're not at the right uh, inclination to hit the KSC anyway, but it'd be nice to at least get the right longitude if not the correct latitude. We're pre pretty much gonna go straight down. Uh, maybe end up around this part of the orbit. I think I've overdone it, but uh, maybe we'll uh, end up on land. Uh, this is only a slight chance of that though. Okay, let's see how close we get to the KSC this time. I was aiming for one six, because uh, Kerbin rotates uh, on a six hour period and we're one hour away from our periapsis, or less now, because we've uh, we've sort of shortened it up. But I uh, was sort of going for one sixth of the planet's circumference. We'll see. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> uh, bad texture issues. Bad texture issues. Um. How's our approach going? Uh, landing short. Okay. Let me stay in this view to hope that uh, maybe the bad texture issues go away. I don't know if we could land here with the Delta V that we've got. So could we maybe burn a little bit forward and but the atmosphere is gonna just kill us anyway. Nah, I don't like it. It's uh, raising my apoapsis. That's not what I wanted to do really. Maybe something more along these lines nope nope it's not gonna help basically going straight down here I do want to dump the fuel though so I might as well decelerate here Like I said, extreme re-entry. This is not something I would do with uh, daily re-entry or anything like that because the G-forces would be horrible. Even in stock KSP, the G-forces would be horrible. Okay, we are at parachute deployment. Good. Landing gear down to protect the engine. 
and let's continue uh, well, let's take off SAS and continue burning off fuel making sure not to start going up otherwise the parachutes will detach okay that's it for the fuel good so we're nice and light Jeb is thrilled parachute deployment now okay good 4.1 meters per second excellent plenty of parachutes of course probably more than we needed probably we could have done with two of the radials so maybe next time I'll I'll just have two radials and replace that mass with some sort of science uh, goo experiments obviously since it's radial and recover so there you have it a successful manned lunar orbital mission we've gotten 175 science from that uh, we only got uh, 6,000 back from the the little uh, lunar orbiter but it looks like fulfillment of the contract brought us back up to the beyond the funds that we started with uh, we landed 218 kilometers away from the KSC and we ended up with 87.8% on that, uh, a B plus, if you will. Uh, Jeb, Jeb's return uh, brought us 2.6 more reputation. Still wondering what happens when you get really high on that. We'll see. Though, uh, if we if returning uh, Kerbal back from uh, orbital mission around the moon doesn't give us more than 2.6, I I don't know what. Uh, this is highly logarithmic at the end there. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to get anywhere with that. Uh, we'll spend the science uh, at the start of the next episode, I think. I think we'll wrap it up on the positive note of successfully conducting this mission and also returning all the parts safely back to Kerbin, albeit with a B-plus on the actual recovery location. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.